Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. Myself, Dr. Ashish Pal, Scientist E at Institute of Nanoscience and Technology, Mohali, Punjab. I am going to discuss a module today that is on nanostructures from protein and peptides under the paper Nanobiotechnology. So, the objective of this module is to understand collagen fiber. Collagen is very important for connective tissue and this, uh, this gives very uh, strong fiber. So we would look into this hierarchical version of collagen, tropocollagen collagen to get into ligament or tendon, how you know the fiber assembles. So th these are actually these tropocollagens are very unique nanofibers. So we would, we would look into the hierarchical version of this collagen superhelix. The next thing we will look at is coiled coil motif when two helix the two or more number of helix they come together and they coil together and form this kind of uh, coiled coil motif and that which is a super helix after knowing that we would look into you know, the comparison of both collagen and coiled coil super helix how is the difference in terms of the uh, fiber formation or many other nanostructure formation then we will show how we can also use this coiled coil motif for making self assemble fiber in a very definite form or we can also make this self assemble fiber made from coiled coil motif for as a template to generate nano uh, mat uh, nano materials like nanoparticle generation in a definite uh, arrangement at the end what we will also look at we will use some other secondary structures like uh, beta sheet forming uh, peptides and uh, beta sheet forming peptides as a head group in, in an amphiphilic molecule to look at different nanofiber formation and how these nanofibers can be utilized for different applications something like tissue engineering or drug delivery collagen is a uh, primarily structural protein in our body and it just lies below the epithelium in our body uh, in and it can be uh, in ligament it can be in tendon it can be in cartilage vessels so actually 30 percent of our of the protein in our body are actually made up with co collagen another important thing about collagen is that the collagen is very much the structure of collagen is very much conserved in species to species that means when uh, evolution has happened there is not much of change in collagen and collagen is actually resistant to enzymatic breakdown that's also very important and there are actually 28 different types of collagen in our body and out of that uh, type 1 uh, mostly and type 3 collagen they are the most stiff collagen and um, the stiffness if you talk about this can be 100 megapascal so this is very stiff and that's what and um, this stiffness and because of it is made of a fiber it can also have very high mechanical strength and this is very useful because they are you know, these collagens are in connecting tissue and then they are holding the muscles with the bones and let's say you talk about uh, uh, our uh, knee there is a lot of cartilage cartilage is also collagen now if you look at uh, collagen under electron microscopy or x-ray you do see there is a there are definite band present in collagen so we would now like to look more in details about collagen fibers collagen in ligament and tendon this collagen fibers are also prevalent in ligament and tendon so in ligament what happens is that it connects two bones together okay and in the case of tendon it connects the bone to the muscle and collagen fiber is integral part of these uh, tissues and if you look at the hierarchical structure of a collagen uh, fiber into forming tendon you can see you can have different length regime or dimension so we start with a tropocollagen which is uh, around uh, 1.5 nanometer and then that tropocollagen can get assembled in microfibril to subfibril to fibril and then eventually to tendon one most important thing in collagen molecular structure is the sequence of 
triple helix. So normally in this uh, triple helix, there is the sequence glycine XY, where X can be proline and Y can be hydroxyproline. So this triad sequence, they get repeated. And um, you can see repetitive characters or amino acids of sequence. It can be either glycine, proline, methionine, or glycine, proline, serine. So this is how it gets repeated. Another thing is that now if you look at this glycine XY, this is the amino acid sequence and this eventually forms this alpha chain of a, or a polypeptide chain. Now three polypeptide chain that actually form a bundle and it forms a super helix or uh, it's a triple helix and it, it this triple helix is actually known as tropocollagen and mind it that one alpha chain is actually left-handed here in the case of collagen but when it forms triple helix the overall chirality of the super helix is right-handed and eventually many of these tropocollagen they actually come together and they form this fibril. One important thing is to note that this triple helix is actually stabilized by the cross-linking between these alpha chains and uh, which actually this gives rise to very stiff and stable tropocollagen, type 1 collagen fiber. So if you look at this collagen fiber, the electron microscopy, you can see that there are some definite periodicity in the collagen fibers. So this has to do with this arrangement of this tropocollagen in the collagen fiber. You can see that in between two tropocollagen, there is a gap. And this is what when you self assemble uh, this gap you can see and this has a 67 nanometer of D period this is known as and in fact this particular gap you can utilize to for biomilarization so this gap you can actually grow crystals of calcium phosphate calcium hydroxyphosphate and this crystals actually strengthens the interactions between the tropocollagen molecules. And this is an example of template driven by mineralization. So now we discuss this coiled coiled superhelix. A coiled coiled superhelix is a arrangement where 2 to 7 approximately that number of um, alpha helix, right handed alpha helix, they actually come together and form like this rope like assembly. And there is uh, this is very important because this coiled coiled uh, interactions they are useful in uh, uh, gene regulation and many other biological functions uh, now important to for the coiled coil uh, structure to form it's important to have a definite amino acid sequence which is h then xx and then h xxx so this is important this is like a heptad there are seven amino acids where h is the hydrophobic amino acid and x stand for the hydro charge amino acid rather and where the hydrophobic amino acid can be isoleucine leucine uh, such type of hydrophobic amino acids and this amino acids where they because of their heptad sequence they can uh, form a particular arrangement where all the non-covalent uh, amino acids are coming uh, can come together and can be stabilized. So in the coiled coiled motif as we are discussing that um, we need to have a repeated heptad pattern. In that case it is like HXX HXXX where H is known as the position for hydrophobic amino acid and X is for the charged amino acids. Normally these hydrophobic positions are occupied by isolution, leucine and valine. So here we see a classical example. The first one A is a classical coiled coil of parallel and dimeric leucine zipper. And here we can see the two coils are coming together and forming this coiled coil motif. There are different representation and the extreme right one is the representation in red circles and in the as you see this is simplest possible coil coil but the lower example is very complex uh, example where it's a complex coil coil assembly a trimer of tetramer is found to be in the structure 
when we compare the collagen superhelix and also the coiled coil superhelix there is a difference in collagen superhelix we see that it has a sequence of glycine xy and xy can be choline and hydroxypropylene or it can be also replaced by some other unit but in the case of coiled coil you have heptad which is hxx h is for hydrophobic position and x for the charge amino acid position so hxx h triple x so in case of collagen if you look at the individual helix handedness the individual helix in uh, collagen is left handed whereas in alpha helical coiled coil individual helix is right handed but when you talk about the super helix handedness the collagen becomes right handed when you take into account the triple helix however the alpha helical coiled coil uh, the overall super helix handedness is left handed we will see how coiled coil motif can be useful for assembling nanofibers so we take for this reason we choose two polypeptide chains which are complementary to each other that means they have complementary glutamic acid and lysine unit in certain positions and this has been chosen to have this heptar sequence where it is uh, hxxx h triple x that's the sequence it is running and it has been designed such a way that it has got a sticky end in terms of the electrostatic interactions and through the wang xiang diagram you can see this a and d has been only populated with hydrophobic amino acids in both one and two polypeptide chain that um, this lysine and glutamic acid they are you see this arrow that means the arrow shows that they are electrostatically interacting that's how they can form fiber however there was a control experiment where there is no sticky end for the case if you take another polypeptide chain that is 3 there is no sticky end possible and 2 and 3 when they form assembly they can form no sticky end it's like a blunt end and this has been shown they form the self assemble fibers see this coiled coil motif is a computer generated model this coiled coil motif form very nice nanofibers similarly this coiled coil motif can be also used for assembling gold nanoparticle so in this case they uh, again there are two polypeptide chains a and uh, a and b they have been taken and they can form again very nice belt and brace like uh, peptide system and this is where you can actually in that junction you can actually synthesize gold nanoparticle and you can see the tm image of uh, three dimensional gold nanoparticle that is uh, assisted by these self assembled peptide fiber the beta sheet and uh, polymer hybrid for assembling nanostructure so if you look at this design of this molecule there is uh, one side you have polyethylene polyethylene oxide chain which is uh, hydrophilic in nature on the other hand you have valenthionine valenthionine like this peptide sequence which are known to form beta sheet assembly because of, we see that if you look at this tm image they form very nice peptide nanofibers and when you look into the cartoon of proposed uh, model for uh, this assembly we can see this peptide unit this beta sheet they can form anti parallel beta sheet so that the core so basically each fiber can have two stacks of uh, this polymer beta sheet hybrid coming together and it can have the core which is hydrophobic peptide in nature and the polyethylene oxide will give it solubility polyisoprene based hydrophobic block was functionalized onto oligopeptide block and uh, based on the combination uh, eight different molecules were actually made as shown in the slide and you can see compound number 1 2 and uh, 3 where you have one diacetylene unit and one side you have isoprene polyisoprene unit then the beta sheet forming peptide unit the other side of the diacetylene you have uh, one amide bond forming unit present there but if you look at compound 4 uh, this has diacetylene group flanked by 
both the side polyisoprene group and uh, you know, beta sheet forming oligopeptide group in the compound number five to eight we have only one side of the diacetylene has oligopeptide and isoprene block but the other side uh, there are polar groups present in there the afm image shows that compound one two and three very long fiber with high aspect ratio and these fibers have parallel beta sheet uh, domain with very pronounced twisting in the fiber but for the compound four there was no twist observed and only flat tapes were observed which comes from single parallel beta sheet unit these different molecules they can be categorized in three different classes one in case four where both the side of diacetylene is flanked by this uh, iso polyisoprene uh, block and also the you know, oligopeptide block this uh, eventually has has both the side 5 and 5 10 hydrogen bond form and this form tape like structure through parallel beta sheet domain with opposite orientation and, uh, in the case of 1 2 3 they have a 5 uh, plus additional uh, another hydrogen bonding from the other side and they form a single parallel beta sheet like structure they eventually can form ribbon because this stage one they have each tape they are helical in nature and they can actually roll twist around each other and form this helix bundle double ribbon like structure and in the third case you can have only single beta sheet which is anti-parallel tape like structure and um, they form flexible thin tape with featureless cross section so now we look at uh, one peptide uh, block copolymer amplifiers so this is an example from the group of samuel stop where he has functionalized one fatty acids with different blocks of peptide here you can see that there is a block where you have a lot of cysteine unit present then there is a block where you have flexible glycine unit present and then followed by a fourth block where you have phosphate group and then you have a charged group present over there and this is called a peptide amplifier because you have the head group amplifier is peptide and this forms very nice fibers you can see from the cryo tm these are all nanometer in dimension so you can have very structured formation of the self-assembled nanofibers how you can change the molecular structure in the peptide uh, block and you can actually get the macroscopic property which is completely different so it is more structure property related study where the samuel stop group they have made peptide amplifier and another case is very soft peptide amplifier but in the case of stiff peptide amplifier you can see all the peptides they are connected in their backbone but in the case of soft peptide you can see one of the lysine side chain and in there that this amino group has been used for pe peptide bond formation so that there is a kink so they introduced the kink in the head group and because of the kink they suggested that this will not pack in a very nice way and there will be always curvature when you make uh, the peptide and indeed they see that in the case of step pa that is the first one polypeptide amplifier are expected to have very strong beta sheet and they form very stiff nanofiber but in the case of soft peptide amplifier they are supposed to have weak beta sheet interaction and because of this branching they form flexible nanofiber they can also see from the cd experiment they could see in the case of stiff peptide amplifier they saw very nice beta fiber but in the case of soft peptide amplifier this was not a very a distinctive signature of beta sheet rather it was like a little bit of random coil based structure however they applied these nanofibers in tissue engineering and uh, what their objective was that they wanted to grow neural no and uh, differentiate into neuronal cells and as you know in the case of neuronal cell you, you, the cells will be a little bit high aspect ratio and uh, they will have uh, fibril like morphology and they see when they incubate the stem cells in uh, in different peptide amplifiers in the case of soft peptide amplifier they dif get differentiated into the neuronal cell but in the other case where you they have used stiff peptide amplifier that case after 28 hours they develop astrocytes 
peptide amplifiers with peptide fragments IK, VAV fragment that can also be used for neuronal cell di differentiation. In fact, this peptide, they, they form very nice hydrogel DMEM cell medium. You can see the nice fibrous structure from the ACM images and this C and D, they show the cell culture media and cerebral spinal fluid where uh, this particular IKKV, IKVAV, they form hydrogel solution. So, this slide shows that IKVAV peptide amplifier gel within 7 days that gives very nice uh, neuronal cell differentiation which is characterized by beta tubulin expression as compared to laminin or other system. But um, you can see that for laminin and uh, other system it is uh, mostly the astrocyte or glial cell that uh, gets expressed and there is also important that how much percentage of IKVAV containing molecule should be doped into the gel then you can see that beyond 40 percent of that uh, IKVAV based polypeptide amplifier you can have a better uh, cell differentiation of the hydrogel medium. So let's summarize what we have learned from this module. Well, first of all, we have uh, got to know about collagen and how um, you know the collagen from triple helix, rather the hierarchical structure of collagen fibers. Like you, if you form tropo collagen, then you eventually move up there, and triple helix of collagen you can form the the gap between the col tropo collagen fiber. How that can be used for biomineralization. So we we understood collagen. So after that, after knowing collagen, then we move to coiled coil motif and the coiled coil, we now we also compare uh, both coiled coil motif and collagen, how they these two uh, structural motifs are different because many people tend to confuse uh, these two uh, superstructure of uh, um, let's say collagen or coiled coil uh, motif. So we, we categorically uh, looked at different aspects of these uh, uh, coil coil and collagen then um, eventually we looked more detail also about coiled coil motif and what are the sequence um, you need to have coiled coil motif and uh, the heptide sequence particularly and how heptide sequence can be actually represented in from three dimension to two two dimension projection so that in order to understand that better and then this uh, then there is again the sticky end concept um, for this hydrogen bonding, um, which can come out from this uh, co coiled coil motif, that we also uh, uh, found out, and with that, we also designed na peptide nanostructures. And uh, eventually, using this co coiled coil motif of peptide nanostructure, we, it's like a belt and brace, we also uh, could assemble nanoparticle in a particular uh, dimension. Then lastly, we also looked at um, how to design uh, uh, nanostructures coming from the beta sheet assembly or helix uh, helical assembly and eventually uh, they form fibers and they, that can also form uh, hydrogel from cross-linking. We have looked into uh, different examples okay, and then looked at how uh, changing the conformation in the peptide sequence, um, how you can tune the fiber morphology and eventually the mechanical property of the fiber, which uh, which can actually reflect in the cell differentiation uh, using that uh, hydrogel scaffold. So um, I hope this uh, entire uh, nanostructure uh, designing from, uh, using the peptide sequence would be helpful for uh, the students. Thank you.